Hello, this is Our Rats with Team 4545 League, analyzing the game between Moravon 23 and Siberica. This game was played in the under 2200 section of team event number 53. Black's team is ahead 2 to nothing, so white needs a win at all costs, just to stay alive. Okay, so let's see what happens. And we go into a King's Indian, and I'm pretty sure it's one of the main lines. Okay, so, so far, so book. And uh, I've given some variations of bishop d2 being a decent move. The idea being bishop d2. I had a game in lesson two where I showed the main line was bishop d2, then knight d7, and knight e1, and f. Well, actually, this isn't the same as... Yeah, it is. Okay. Knight uh, f5, and then now knight d3, and you're hoping that black pushes by with f4. And actually, I have a game played in this uh, event that nobody dominated yet that I'm going to do a video on in the near future for this round, where uh, black did play f4 in this position. Let's just go back to the main line. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with bishop g5. Okay. Now it goes back to d2. And I guess here the idea, I guess black, uh, white could play knight e1 and play it like I just said, but here's the point, queen c1, which seems to require black to bring the king up. Okay, guard h6, and now knight e1, now the thematic uh, f5. Now white could hold f3 for a moment, okay? Uh, the point is, now what what can white do aside from f3? It could play b4, and the point is, I'm just going to throw b4 in. The point is, if black rushes ahead with f4, then white gets bishop g4 in, and eventually these white squared bishops get exchanged, which is to white's favor. White wants to get rid of the white squared bishops. Black doesn't. Uh, black wants to get rid of the dark squared bishops. White doesn't. Okay. So... For what it's worth, f3, okay, and now f4. Now we've kind of reached the standard uh, formation of this type of King's Indian defense, and in my video series, Lesson 2 has some uh, an instructive game on this. Essentially, you've got these two uh, pawn chains in the center of the board that have cut the uh, board in half. Uh, white has three open, uh, three files to play on. Here, I'm just showing them to you and black has two to maneuver on and the position is considered basically even even though white has an extra file and the reason for this is that at the end of black's two lines uh, there's a king to, to go attack so that's what's supposed to make it about even uh, let me just get rid of these arrows okay uh, f4 okay so also, what's interesting is the line of commu communication between the two sides of the board. Uh, anything that black uh, moves on to either side of the board must go through this line, but through d6, I'm sorry, d7 and d8. And conversely, anything that white sends to either side of the board must go through f2 or f1, one way or the other. That's basically your line of communication between the two sides. Okay, so let's see what happens. It just continues. White continues uh, as he's supposed to. Black continues as he's supposed to. Get get the pawns rolling. Okay, why isn't it moving? Do I have lag again? Yep, I do have lag. Darn it. Okay, so all this is thematic. And I had a game in my Lesson 002 where Black avoided all the things he was supposed to do on the king side and instead battened down the hatches on the queen side. And I just out outplayed him. With, from my advantages in the position. Black has to undergo this uh, kingside attack or he's toast. <coughs> okay. And it's hard to criticize either player. It looks both both are playing really, really good chess here. They're following the strategies. This is about as well as they could be followed. And g3. Now this is a very, very interesting move. Black must be prepared uh, for the event that white goes with by with h3 and I was wondering about this and playing with it a little bit before I did the video you have to be careful about locking up the position like this because what this means is that 
that uh, you're going to have to do a sacrifice at some point. Now, I'm not saying what the best one is going to be here, but probably I was just playing with it. I think knight h4 is good, and what you want to do is plan a sacrifice on h3 as quick as you can, and then probably bring the queen up to d7 to be ready to take on h3 and give a checkmate or if you can and so forth but white has time to try to prepare against that but it'd probably be pretty nerve-wracking to have to prepare for that sacrifice but then again just having this kingside attack against you is nerve-wracking that's one of the things that white must do if he's going to play this play the system against the king's indian defenses and endure a kingside attack there's just no way shape or form around it it's going to happen like death and taxes <laughs> okay so he makes the exchange and now here's an interesting move black offers another pawn just for some activity white probably can't take on f4 the black knights just start coming into the position and black is going to get some reasonable attacking chances here with the open files that are op that are occurring so white forestalls things and plays h5 i'm sorry g g4 attacking the knight on h5 now this is interesting black is willing to part with that aggressive knight in in return for sticking a knight uh pawn in on g3 and then has visions of queen h4 and queen h2 mate so what's white going to do is rooks uh loose he offers the exchange and very interesting what do you do with black here do you take the exchange or do you keep the attack going uh... what's happening here i i have no clue uh... i can't sit here and evaluate this thing exactly as the players did in the short amount of time i had what i really want is the players to come in here and discuss why these things come because then they can share their thoughts and so forth i can't do it all here i need you guys too but let's just take a quick look. Knight takes f1. I mean, it, it's there. It takes away a lot of the uh, black attack, but it, it still begs an exchange for now. White has a pawn in compensation for it. Uh, black still can generate some attacking chances. Okay. How's white going to retake? Probably with the bishop. Okay. Now the next step. Remember what I said? You want to trade your dark squared bishops. Okay. Bishop f6. Now this just plans to put the bishop on h5 and I'm sorry h4 and then put it on g3 send the queen to h4 and give mate so what's white going to do uh, if white keeps his attention on the king side he's going to be playing an exchange down and uh, and I have to find something and c takes d6 is is the logical thing it's what white would be doing in a normal king's indian defense against the normal kings in defense is expanding on the queen side but it still comes down he's down the exchange so if, if white's going to win this he's it's going to have to win it on the on the queen side and hope to stave off any mate, mate on the king side so i don't know i i, I think that white should, or black should have taken that exchange it was there then uh make make white play on down down material and prove that he can do something here and I'm not exactly sure what white does. So, I, again, I couldn't analyze everything out, but I'd sure like to know what the, what the players thought of this. Why didn't uh, black take that exchange? So, anyway, he played bishop d7, and he did it after, after a 13-minute thought, so that's more time than I took on it. And, anyway, it's still there. It's still there. A little bit of lag. But again, what's the hurry too? It's not going anywhere. That's another that's another bit of logic too. Sometimes these things, well, he didn't do anything to save it, so so I'll just let it sit there. I can always take it later. Well sometimes, you know, when you want to take it later it's not so good. Now what's interesting now is look at the time. White has three minutes and thirty seven seconds left and he's got the ideal position set up on the queen side, but it's his king side is still a little risky. So, anyway, what happens next? And this is all perfectly logical so far. And white continues on his way, going to attack on the queen side with the pawns. And it's probably risky to take that pawn on c6. Uh, the bishop will just come under attack, uh, and then 
a threat on C7 exists. So black correctly ignores the pawn. Now knight D5. And there it is. It's still there on F1. I'm not going to analyze each possibility white could take it, but it's still there if he wants it, and he doesn't want it. Okay, now G5, which is probably forced, just to keep that H file closed. Okay. Otherwise, uh, Black's going to find some kind of use for it, I would think. And now this is interesting. It offers this pawn on C7, whether White could take it safely or not. I don't know. He didn't take it. Uh, but looks like Black's getting everything he wants out of this position. And now Knight H3, which uh, tempos the Queen. So what what's White going to do? Or Black going to do? Take on H3. Well, the problem with that is it opens up this diagonal here. So you got to you got to calculate all those discoveries. And Black's time is starting to evaporate. But he took it. And then there's the check I mentioned, the discovery. And White run, uh, Black runs this King. And now Black. Let's see. What did he take? He took up Knight. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not sure what the best sequence of exchanges is. Let's see. What are we going to do? Do we want to take the bishop or do we want to take take the knight? Hmm. Hard to say. Very interesting choices. Like I say, black and white should get in here and explain their reasoning. And unfortunately, though, as a result of all this, the uh, the rook on f1 is no longer under an attack. Black got rid of the attacker, and or white got rid of the attacker, and it went away. So, this is an interesting line. Trading one bishop for another, and Black's got this subtle idea here. He's giving up a pawn with check, but the problem is, if white takes it, he runs into a lot of trouble. Here, I'll show you. Rook takes check. Now, uh, king g7. Now, Black's got to deal with or White's got to deal with uh, his loose rook. Clearly taking on h8 just is disaster. Black takes back with check. King goes to g2 and I think it's mate with queen g6 or queen g5. So if the rook comes to h2 you just take it and do the same rook check. So White has to be very careful here. He finds a good move. Avoid some of those problems and Black just shows a pawn for want of anything better. Uh, but now what what's interesting is even though Black has had this attack, it's kind of dissipated. White's found defenses and maybe some of some of it is because Black never took that uh exchange that he could have taken. Uh suddenly actually White is getting some threats here. If you look now the there is an attack with check on that uh, on that pawn, and it's with the queen. So it's a little more dangerous to trade off queens and and survive this thing. And then white would be up a pawn. So there's more to it than that. So black goes back to his theme. If you take it, you're in trouble. And white just activates another rook. Now that rook is very well placed. Now there's some threats of rook h5 check coming in. So rook g8, and now there's this. Now white white has a double attack. He's attacking the queen. This this discovery attacks the queen and uncovers an attack on the rook. And unfortunately, now white is, or for black, or yeah, unfortunately for black, he's just gone from bad to worse, and white now has a winning combination. Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can see it. Okay, you've come back, and I hope you found this little queen check, because that's the key move. doesn't matter what black does. He's got two legal squares to go, and no matter which one he goes to, white's checking again with the queen, and the king has to go back, and then it's checkmate. Here, I'll show you. He went here, check, and black resigned, because take your pick, king h6 uh, or king h7, and it's mate on h3. So, great game by White. You, you played defense. You, you hung on. You survived. Uh, still a decent game by Black. Uh, wish I could have done more justice to this video, but this is an example of how to defend a, against an attack. I want to thank everyone for their time.